those levies do all of the levies yesterday we'll dive into that in a couple of seconds but want to dive into an issue that's going on lakota school system joining me now rich hoffman from no lakota levy how are you sir fantastic it's a beautiful day there well it's a beautiful day because most of those levies went down and that's a good fact (laughs) Uh, all but uh loveland and norwood went down i don't know what they were thinking but thank goodness there's still uh a fair number of people who aren't stupid now, there was no Lakota levy on the ballot this time, but that doesn't mean that everything is going great in the Lakota School District. No, no, no. It's, it, it's not all Peachy King. Since we talked, uh, I think we, we, on your show, we talked about the busing cuts and after the levy and, and the evolution of how they were going to proceed with uh, obtaining their funding. And then we also revealed on your show that they were looking, they were spending $50,000 for a superintendent. And that, that was searching for the superintendent. Searching for a superintendent. Now, this, the previous superintendent retired uh, prior to the levy attempt in November. So Lakota's been without a, a superintendent now for two business quarters, so essentially the last quarter of, of 2010 and then, of course, this first quarter of 2011. They haven't replaced. They have a guy named Ron Spurlock who is filled in and taking care of the superintendent duties as an assistant superintendent. So what they've done is, with their $50,000 search to um, um, Hudipol and Associates, uh, that, that, that firm, that search firm, basically instructed the school board, and then the school board then went around and gently passed this along to everybody else in the business community that a new superintendent that was business-minded and had all the attributes that we were looking for to cut costs was going to cost the taxpayers $300,000. The three hundred thousand is that is that salary? Salary, yeah, raw salary. And we thought that the the previous superintendent that had some tenure there and, and was, you know, he'd been in the school system for a long time. We thought one hundred fifty-two thousand dollars a year was extraordinarily high. And here, this advisor that they that the, our our school board spent fifty thousand uh, dollars, the cost of a teacher, uh, spent that much money to get information to basically find out that it was going to cost us basically two superintendents that get paid extraordinary amounts of money to bring our budget in balance. Okay, so they spent $50,000 <laughs> to say that you're going to need 300000 annually in just salary, not including <laughs> yeah. all the other stuff, the <laughs> retirement yeah. or whatever, in just salary for your new superintendent. Exactly. I was after efficiency in, in small government. <laughs> this, is, this is incredible, Rich. No, it, it no, is no, incredible. Number one, as I said before, I don't know why you need to spend fifty thousand dollars. I would say go on Monster dot com and start posting some ads. There's probably quite a few educators like everybody else that are looking for jobs. Right. There's a lot of people in this climate that are qualified to do that job. And, and as evidence of that, you have a an assistant superintendent that has been filling the job, and I think quite nicely. He he makes six figures, but I don't think he's that unreasonable, especially if we're not paying an assistant and a superintendent. I don't mind paying a guy six figures to, to do the job because it obviously, ob- Lakota is obviously able to function without that position, if you know what I mean. I mean well, yeah, because you've got an interim one, yeah. Right. And exactly, it's not exactly like everything's dropped off the face of the earth for six months. Um, yeah, well. I would say that, and I would say, uh, just off the top of my head, about six figures would be about right for a superintendent. About, yeah, around $100,000, depending sure, on the district. I, I don't think anybody would debate that. I think when you start climbing up over 120, 130, you're, you know, for that kind of position, you know, you're asking a person to, to manage 22 buildings and, and 18,000 uh, students and mm-hmm. then all the employees that go with it. That's, that, that's not outrageous. But you start getting up to $150,000, $200,000, you're, you're just milking the taxpayer. It's yeah, unnecessary. Yeah, and, and, and anyone who says, well, you know, CEOs make millions. Well, you know what? Let them go work in the private sector if that's what they want to do. This is what a job of an educator at that level pays, around 100000 Right, right, right. And, and you, what, you're, what we face here, and, and with all the, the levy failures yesterday, uh, the attempts, and, and you listen to the, the, the complaints on one side and then the, the, the taxpayers that are voting no on these things on the other side, you basically have this, this Keynesian idea that the, all the schools are based on that if you just throw more money at something, it, then the value is equal to the money. And, and anybody who works in the real world knows that that's not the case. That simply is an unproven model that never worked. 
but yet uh, people who like to play politics, it, it's easy to give people things and get things back in, in, the, in the form of a vote, and school boards are naturally attracted to that type of economic philosophy. What, is, uh, what are they basing the need for $300,000 for the salary on? What well, I was saying that's what a comparable CEO would, would cost if, you, if it was in the private sector, which isn't true. And he's also assuming that it would, it, the, the superintendent would run like a, a, you know, a, a dictator-type uh, position where he's all in control, which he's not. And they're basically saying that that's the equivalent if he were to take private sector and, and compare it to a school system. But they're, they're obviously not. The, 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 the job duties are not equivalent to running a business. Uh, because they have so much support staff, and there's so many, there's so many people carrying the ball. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's not like it falls on just one guy. So when Hudipole came out and made the announcement, I, and I found out about this because the No Lakota group has been getting together since the election. We get together about once a month and, and plan, because we know that Lakota is going to ch- attempt another levy in 2011. So to stay on top of that and, and stay ahead of it and make sure that cause they don't need it, they really don't need it. The revenue, it's not a revenue problem. It's definitely a spending problem and a perception, obviously, with this case, that you know, we have different ideologies about how to go about achieving the same thing. But we've been meeting, and, and the, it was members of the business community that are in our No Lakota group that were invited to a meeting with Hudipole, the, the guy who runs the Hudipole Associates. And the, the intention was to split us, you know, to pull the business community out of the No Lakota group and hope that we would be divided and then they could then... Put do the, the, do the end, yeah, do the end, end around and get it on in November. And, and they reported, because I wasn't invited to that meeting, they, they, but they, they told us at the meeting what, what went on in the discussions, and that's where this number came out, that the, it was warned to them, hey, if you want this kind of superintendent, a business-minded, outside-the-box thinker, it's going to cost you three hundred grand. Wow. Well, now, well, well, well yeah. yeah. If you if you say, you know, well, that's, you know, assuming that, you know, a CEO is all powerful, they get to call the shots or whatever. You're assuming that that superintendent won't eventually become all powerful. Maybe that's their eventual goal, right? That's probably the, the eventual intent of the goal. But we all know that it's right. It, they, they, you know, it's the, the unions run everything and, and they're looking if you, if they're basically saying if you want someone who's going to work outside the union, it's going to cost you this. And they know that nobody wants to pay it. So it's, it's another way to bend you over backwards and, and make you pay it this way or make you pay it the other way. So they've, they've had levies on in recent, well, we had one just last fall in, in, yeah. for Lakota. They have cut, and although we've talked about it, they, primary cuts were things that affect the, the parents, things like uh, busing. They've cut back busing. Right. They right. have increased the fees for things like uh, extracurricular activities. I think for junior Before. high, it went from 200 to 350, and high school, it went from 300 to 550. Yeah. They've done all that. They're saying that they w- would likely have to go come up with $300,000 for just a salary for, for the superintendent, <laughs> and they still have talked about putting a, another ball- uh, levy on the ballot. Oh, yeah. They, they're, they're definitely fishing this thing for a – an August or November push, and you know we're 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 not going to let that happen, because they, this is completely irresponsible. It's it's not even in the in the ballpark. They're not they're not even playing the same field with the team they think they're playing for. It doesn't even make any. It, it, when you spend that, we thought it was audacious to spend the money for the search, but then to get those kind of results. I mean, if someone had paid me fifty thousand dollars to find a candidate, I'd probably have somebody today. Yeah, exactly. Fifty. Th- Listen, I guarantee you, I'll come up with some people by the end of the day if I know I'm going to get paid fifty grand. I would have hired you. Just go there, Doc. Have a job. Yeah, I'm serious. That's a, well. In the fifty thousand dollars, that is another salary for one year. Right. Right. Exactly. Or That's multiple average, salaries. Yeah, the average salary at Lakota is sixty-two. It's probably creeping up to sixty-three thousand dollars a year now. And you know, the people who are on a bottom run, entry-level teachers, forty-five to fifty thousand dollars, which is, I think, really, really good. That's the cost of one teacher. So one of those teachers they laid off, they laid off because they spent on this superintendent search. I mean, they could even go on more of the, you know, the upscale job search sites like Ladders or whatever those are. Hang on one second, Rich. I want to get a quick call while you're staying on the line. Michael in Lebanon, how are you? Good morning, sir. I'm pretty good. You know, we had some information distributed to the voters prior, just prior to the election. And I was going to tell this guy, Lakoti, he could have our superintendent. You know, he only makes 153000 what do you think's about right, Michael? He's getting paid one fifty three for Lebanon. What what is about no, no, right? No, 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 no. I'm not saying that's right. This gentleman 
came to Lebanon, I think, in 2006, making 103000 And in 2010, he made 153000 That's a pretty big jump. As, uh, especially when they're crying and uh, asking for levies, talking about cutting back, and et cetera. So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm glad that information was uh, presented to the voters prior to the election, and obviously it, it did what it was meant to do, yeah, open some people's eyes. Oh, yes, and thanks for calling in with that. But I'll tell you something, Mike. I wouldn't give you, I wouldn't give you two cents for Mark North. I followed that situation out there in Lebanon a little bit, and when things started getting hot, Mark North looked for a job up in Cuyahoga County. And when he didn't get the job, then he tried to backtrack and say, well, I, I'm committed to the community. I'm going to stick around. But what it really come down to is he was just doing what a lot of these other superintendents do, and it's just hold the people over the – hold the taxpayer to the fire, expect them to just take it. And, and he was ramming stuff down their throat, especially passing at SB5. When SB5 passed and he signed that union contract prior to, um, prior to Kasich signing it, trying to sneak it under the door, that was bad. So what? What? How does how does it pay, uh, compare? He's saying uh, Lebanon, it's one fifty three for the superintendent a, a year, which I think is is still high. How, how does that uh, compare? How does the three hundred thousand dollars a year compare nationwide or in the region or in the state? Well, I don't know. I mean, the highest paid guy I know in, in the state of Ohio was was uh, Kevin Bright of Mason when he's fleeing to to Lakeland up in Cleveland. What was what was uh, he, he making? Was Do you remember? 200. He was like two fifty if you count as double dipping. I know for a while the superintendent of the Cleveland School District was making about two fifty, and um, Barbara Bird Bennett was her name. She was there a few years and then left. I know the superintendent's still in that category. She had bonuses and everything else. Was still under the three hundred thousand, if I recall, and she was one of the highest paid in the country. Now that was about four or five years ago. Right, right, and and, and that's the, the, the average is is between one hundred and one fifty. Yeah, in fact, for big districts. I pulled up uh, a, on PayScale.com and a couple of other places, and it's hard to you know to narrow in because there's a lot of different sources here. But right. Most of the ones I saw, depending upon the size of the school district, sixty-one thousand to one hundred and eighty-eight thousand a year. Bonuses go anywhere from about fifteen hundred a year to forty-five thousand. So their total pay, the the pay range. Even bonuses and salary, not including retirement, that would be sixty-one thousand to one hundred and ninety-two. Yes, and, there's a, and don't forget the car allowance. There's a car allowance for a lot of these guys, six hundred dollars a month. Does does uh, Lakota have a car allowance? I don't think that they have a car allowance. I know the Mark North in uh, Lebanon does, and it was six hundred dollars a month, and he drives a big truck for you know whatever whatever that means. But you know, we know how important it is to these guys. I mean, you see Mark Mallory suing the city over his, and he mm-hmm. didn't give his up, but he's. You see the the arrogance that people in this position have, and and you've used the term uh, the nameplate gods or something to that effect mm-hmm. for people who are attracted to that nameplate. They want the power, and they're so attracted to the, the the power of position and the car and all the perks that makes them feel good. And I think that their 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 ego problems get in the way of the real value of what they provide a community, and and it distorts reality completely. And a lot of parents just want their kid to go to school; they want to know they can go to college. They don't care about all that stuff, so they throw money at these these ego maniacs, and they take advantage of it. It's open robbery, in my opinion. So Lakota has about eighteen thousand students. Yeah, eighteen thousand five hundred, I believe it is. I saw another pay scale from the American Association of School Administrators, and they break it down by size of the school. And I'm not going to go through all of them, but they say if you have 10,000 to 25,000, the average is 164,000 a year. Over 25,000 students, $211,000 a year. So congratulations. You guys will set a new record. Yeah, we'll set a new record. We, we hire someone at $300,000. We might as well close shop. I saw something else. Do you realize that one in four Ohio school superintendents collect a pension while working? The double, <laughs> double dippers? Oh, one in yeah. four. One in That's- four. Yeah, one in four, that's a whole separate issue. And, and when people, if people really start looking at this issue, they're going to be furious when they find out what the real game is. And that's what it is, a shell game. And you want to believe these guys. You want to think they're honest, and you want to, you want to trust them because we send our kids to them, and they're running the school systems that we're entrusting them to. But, you know, and I, I'm not saying that the Lakota guy uh, that retired, he was an all right guy. He's pretty, I think he's pretty sincere. But when you meet some of these folks, 
there's some downright dirty, snaky politicians that you might find from a Looney Tunes cartoon embodied in those people. Rich Hoffman from uh, No Lakota Levy. Rich, before I let you go, and I, we don't have the time to spend on another day, I'm going to get you on. We're going to talk about some of the things being taught in the schools because I was doing my research. I don't know if you've <laughs> noticed on the Lakota School website, their cultural center. Are you the familiar with that? The cultural center, yes. Oh, the cultural I could, yes. I could talk with you for about four hours on this by <laughs> itself, but I do oh, want yes. to direct people to my website. Go to 700wlw.com, and you'll find the links to just the Lakota Cultural Center. I'm sure they're in most schools, but when you read this garbage, you have to ask yourself, We're paying. they want to pay $300,000 for a superintendent, continue to pay the teachers they do to teach this? To teach you feel good, Doc. It, you, you're, you're supposed to be culturally diverse and to have little flowers and birds flying around your head when you read those things. I guess I just need more Kool-Aid and then I'll feel better about stuff you, like you just that. drink the Kool-Aid just like Jim Jones. All right, Rich Hoffman, thanks, buddy. Appreciate you joining me. All right. $300,000 for a superintendent? Wow. I think I need to get my application in. Doc Thompson, 700 W. Fox 19 Storm Tracker Forecast. Slowly clearing this afternoon, high around 55, partly cloudy tonight, low 38. Sunshine returns tomorrow, finally, at a high near 65. 43 right now at 700 WLW. So the levees yesterday, all but two failed locally. All but two failed locally. You had Norwood and Loveland, they passed. Schools. Some other things that passed, other levees, that those were school levees, by the way. All but two school levies failed, Loveland and Norwood. Cleves tax levy, it passed 55%. Uh, The Elmwood Place tax levies, both of them passed. One was for police, one was for fire. They uh, both passed at about 84%. Columbia Township, the road levy passed by 70%. Ross Township's fire levy passed by 78%. Warren County's, uh, Franklin's in Warren County, their income tax levy uh, it passed 66.5%. Well, not levy, their income tax change passed by 66.5%. That one, and, and I'm not intimately familiar with that, but if you haven't raised taxes since the 70s, well, you, you certainly are easier to go to, uh, make it easier to go to the constituents and say, yeah, we need to raise something there as opposed to going all the time. New Richmond's tax levy, it failed 56%. Failed by 56%. Fascinating to see the numbers, though, when it comes to the superintendents. One out of every four, 25% of superintendents in the state of Ohio who have been, that's the number that have been rehired to work full-time in that same chief executive position. They retire and they hire them back, so they essentially are double-dipping. STRS, or STARS members, with 35 years of service are eligible for annual retirement benefits equal to nearly 90% of the average of their highest three-year earnings. The average teacher high pay last year, the average teacher pay was $55,500 in the state of Ohio. Superintendents of urban schools average more than twice that, $118,000, and the statewide average for all superintendents is $101,000 a year. And every extra amount of money that they are paid every year directly translates into bigger monthly pension checks as well. So how are they able to do this? Well, there was a change in the law in 2000. It made it easier for school districts to keep those superintendents. They didn't have to have a waiting period. There used to be an 18-month waiting period. You'd retire. They'd have to wait 18 months before they could hire you back. Well, they eliminated that in the year 2000. So if you teachers people that were upset about SV5 and stuff like that, and you teachers who feel like you've been on the front line of this stuff and people like me that are criticizing you, well, this is one where I'm in your corner. You're right. These superintendents are making way too much. Even in a big district, $100,000 a year is plenty. If you're willing to pay them more and you're willing to have your taxes increased, that's fine. I am not. Certainly not now with the number of people out of work and the gas prices going up. Absolutely not. It's time to tighten your belt. $300,000 for Lakota is outrageous. Doc Thompson, 700 WLW. 
Reds and Astros do battle today right here on 700 WLW. Marty and Jeff have the first pitch at 1235. Your coverage on 700 WLW starts at 1135. It's all today on 700 WLW. Get to uh, some calls here. We got uh, Brian, Liberty Township. How are you, Brian? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Thanks for taking my call. I, uh, I have two quick points. I'm a Liberty Township citizen with three kids in the school system, and I honestly am a conservative that's very torn about this levy. And I'll give you, I want to make two quick points real quick. First of all, in regards to the salaries, and I wasn't going to bring this up, but in regards to the salaries of these superintendents, these, these guys are, are CEOs of multi, multi, multi-million dollar companies. I don't know what the budget spend of Lakota is, but I'm sure it's $80, $90 million, $50 million, whatever it is. I challenge anybody to walk into a $50 million a year company in any part of the city of Cincinnati and find me the CEO that makes less than two hundred or two hundred fifty, three hundred thousand dollars $300,000 a year. If we want to get the right talent in leadership in our organizations that run and educate our children, we're going to have to step up from a leadership. If we want this individual to negotiate with the, with the, with the teachers' union, if we want them to be able to balance a budget and play hardball and be a true CEO, you're not going to get, you're going to go out and pay a hundred grand for a glorified high school teacher that's moved their way up through the school system and they're going to, they're going to spend their way and we're never going to get out of this problem. So let me, so let me ask you, so you think that superintendents, quality superintendents only care about their, their paycheck? I think that quality superintendents can, can, can battle the battles that need to be fought with the teachers union with the with the with all the different departments of uh, food and, and and transportation can manage something. If you go get out and get yourself a hundred thousand dollar superintendent, you're going to get somebody that's four years removed from being a physics teacher at, at the local high school. Do you now, think me, do you, do you think that quality superintendents only care about their or primarily care about their own income? No. Do you think that is how most educators and most superintendents are driven? I would say that they are driven both by their status, much like any other. Let me reverse the question. Is any CEO of any $50 million or $80 million carry company just only care about their salary or their income? See, my, my point is you're assuming that money is the only thing that's going to bring, bring quality superintendents to the table. Compensation. Hey, what I've and always grown up my if, whole life, that, 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 that value... Is, is, is in the value, but you pay for what you get, man. No, I, see, I, 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 I hear this when it comes to charities as well. You've got some charities out there that spend 90% of what they take in on uh, operational and salaries and everything else on administrative costs, 90-some percent. And the argument is, well, if they were in the private sector, we'd have to pay them. Well, then go work in the private sector. If you are drawn to make a good living, but also do something that you feel compelled to do, then here's what it is. I would say $100,000, $120,000 a year is a pretty good salary for a superintendent, certainly today. And you're, and you're not going to get the competency that you expect to, to battle these battles with the, student, with the teachers' unions. And you, and you, you're, when you say we keep getting, if, if we don't uh, pay them more, we're going to keep getting what we've been getting, you, you, uh, you think that the superintendents are responsible for the, the school systems today? That's the problem with them? If we go to Chicago and find a superintendent there that kicked butt and took names and was able to deal with teachers and deal with issues, or New York or whatever major city, or Atlanta or whatever city that's bigger than Cincinnati, and how are we going to attract that talent? No, that's no, what we're trying to do. No, I understand that's that. That's what but we're trying to do. If you're saying we want things to be better, I'm assuming you mean we have to pay them more so we will have better schools. Is that what you mean? No, that we can we can deal with the budget crisis that we're in right now. I'm against this levy. I'm against buying a 10-year note to to fulfill a budget for three years. I'm against it. But put the hundred thousand dollar schlep at the leadership is not going to do anything about battling these. It's like taking a fifty. Battling. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Battling who? Who are they going to have to battle? As superintendent unions. to battle Teacher the unions. unions. Okay. Yeah, the battle of the unions. See, here, Absolutely. here's the thing is and, the, the superintendent really can't do a whole lot without something like an SB5. So unless you have something like that, whether they make $25,000 a year, $25 million a year, it's not going to matter. It's not now, the superintendent. 
I, I just want you to think about that, and I want the audience to think about that. If you, you pay for what you get in this world, if I were a CEO of a $50 million company, I would laugh at a $100,000 salary. Well, I would laugh at it. And you wouldn't take it then. See, you're also I assuming wouldn't. you're also assuming the, uh, that the more money we pour into a school district, the better the education is going to be. I didn't say school district. Well, I wait a minute. Is, isn't that the same I thing, though? Leadership. Do you, no, do you, su- do you support absolutely. the idea that the, the more money that we pour in education, the better education will be? No, absolutely not. Just in then why would you say that when need, it comes to superintendent? Do we, do we need an $80,000 first grade teacher? No. Do we need a $250,000 CEO? Absolutely. So you don't, think the te- you don't think quality brings, uh, or money brings quality teachers in, but money is going to bring quality superintendents uh, in? A, there is a diminishing returns uh, of anything. And an and eighty thousand dollar first grade teacher is ridiculous. Well, two hundred fifty thousand dollar CEO of a two hundred a hundred million dollar company is not. It's 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 the it's the going rate. If we're not going to be competitive, it's like it's like uh, it's like college football. If I don't have a good workout facility, college kids aren't going to be coming and recruit here. If I can't recruit the best talent, they paid fifty thousand dollars to have a world class recruiting organization go out and find a world class talent. They didn't pay some schlep who runs a no for Lakota. Levy place. See, they pay, they paid a big, heavy hitting head hunting firm, fifty grand. Go so, out and so you're so you're guy. somebody that buys into the hype. I, I big I'm, heavy I'm hitting leadership. firm. I'm a leadership. Big I'm a leadership. heavy hitting firm. See, you you've bought into it, Brian. I appreciate the call, and I appreciate you sharing your thoughts. But on one hand, you say money won't bring in uh, quality teachers, but it will bring in quality leadership. And you're buying into the hype that if they go out and get a big firm to look for somebody, that's how you're going to find quality people. You can't have it both ways. Either you think the money brings in the quality teachers, so the teachers should be paying a whole lot more, or you think that money doesn't necessarily always bring in the high quality. Can't have it both ways. If you say you're going to apply that to the superintendent, then you got to apply that to teachers and everybody else. Doc Thompson, 700 WL. Bob Newhart's going to be at Belterra Casino Resort May 14th. He's going to be there. You can see him. You want to win tickets? Go to 700WLW.com and search contest for your chance to see Bob Newhart at Belterra Casino. That's pretty cool. Bob's hilarious. Of course, I haven't seen him in a couple years, but I'll assume he's still just as funny. Bob in Liberty Township. Hi there. Yeah, I just don't get it, Doc. You know, they want to talk about spending $300,000 on a superintendent. That's fine. But just show me where he justifies it. You know, you give me a, everybody wants to say he's a CEO and a CEOO and all this kind of stuff. That's ridiculous. I want an educator. I want somebody who's going to work with my kids and do my kids. I got three kids. I got one in high school, one in the junior high, and one in the elementary school. So I got them all three covered. You know what's funny and about I, this, Bob? You're, you're right. It, it, when you look at a CEO of a company, what is their goal? A, a, a chief executive officer for a company, their goal is to make a profit for their investors or the owner, right? Exactly. What does a, I, what does a superintendent do? Is their goal to, to make money? No. Their goal is to educate, right? Educate my kids, make my world a better place. That's what I want. I don't want somebody who's just in it for the dollar. I want him to look beyond the dollar. I don't want him to look beyond this year. I want him to look beyond the next 20 years. These are the kids that are going to take care of me in my elderly years. And I want to know that they're getting the education they need so that they can keep this world going for their kids. Right. You know, and the problem I have with Lakota isn't necessarily with the unions or anything along those lines. It's the way they spend their money now. Show me where you're spending your money now. I walk into a classroom and I see all this state-of-the-art equipment and this, that, and another. That's fine and dandy. I didn't have that. And I'm doing pretty good for myself. I don't know what you need that in every single classroom from kindergarten up to the high school. I, you know, I, I appreciate your thoughts, Bob. I, I do uh, agree with you there that there is a difference when it comes to a company because their goals are different. Ike in Covington, hi there. Well, I just wanted to tell you, in talking to that other caller, What he was trying to tell you was they want you to pay the teachers their top money. And if you can afford a little bit more, fine. But give them the top money. And as for the superintendent, just pay him the top money. Because if his top money, instead of 100000 for a superintendent, is 200000 pay him 200000 That's all he was trying to say. So should we we pay him a million dollars? Now, see that you like to ask those questions and change it around. That's what you did to him. Do you want No. 
No, you know so I'm how, going to say no. Well, of course I, well, I don't. Well, how much is enough then for Whatever a superintendent? Whatever they pay superintendents. Whenever somebody Whatever they pay them, that's fine. And yeah, if superintendents... Anybody that takes your job should make as much as you're making if you're good. If you're not good and they pay them a little bit more, then that's okay, a little bit more. But you don't... Well, how much it. is a little bit? What? Well, if a little bit's okay, then why? how about a little bit more than a little bit? Well, then that's wrong. All that, see, that okay, name is just okay, trying to, I, you try to put okay, words I, in his mouth. I didn't try, try, I'm asking questions. I, I'm asking you questions. What, that's what I said. You got a way of asking questions to change the conversation, put words in the guy's mouth. <laughs> Putting words, I, that's the reason what I, I asked you. you. I asked, hold on a second, Ike. I asked you. You said if they want to pay him a little bit more, fine, just pay him a little bit more. A little bit so, more. That is, fine. Uh, not, okay. Not, not, uh, not double. Okay. Not triple. Not double or triple, just a little bit. Yeah, well, then yeah, let me it's add, a little bit more. I don't want to put words in your mouth, Ike. Let me make sure I understand. Understand a little bit more. Yeah, so but that's how, not necessary. Well, wait that's a minute. Him. Wait a minute. What about a little bit more than a little bit? No, because that's not a little bit more. Well, See, then, how, do you, how do you wait a minute? I, wait that. a minute. Wait a minute. Then how do you? What is the cutoff? Is it by percentage? The best is it dollar amounts? How, best, how do you determine? The best cutoff is what I said when I first called you. Give the school teacher the top money. The top top is, money based on what? Don't underpay. Him. Pay them what they get. Top money based on what? National average, local average, what the union is asking for? What, 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 is your, what is your top money based on? Whatever the top teachers get in the country. So we go to the top teachers, regardless of the size of the district or this, uh, the, uh, the, the affluent business of the area, and we say, teachers. if you're making 100000 or fifty or well, whatever it is. Well, they're not going to find that. I'm asking you, Ike. Hold on a second. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Hold on one second so I don't put good. words in your mouth. Well, you so are because you're trying to ask me questions. Well, you keep you talking here. Do you want me to ask you the question or not? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So under your plan, we would find the highest paid teachers in the country. I didn't say that. You said find the top paid teachers. I said pay them the top rate. You should be able to get So the what top is the top rate? rate? The top Whatever rate is, is. Who's... I don't know. I don't know what the top rate is for auto manufacturers. I don't know what the top rate is for salesmen. Mike, Mike, hold on a second. The top rate would be what the top people are making, right? What the best are making. Yes. So we find what the best are making and we pay all teachers that? Is that what you're suggesting? That's enough. Just that. Not anymore. Just like, let's go back to the superintendent. Let's find out what the top <laughs> so superintendents it, it are making. So it doesn't matter how much the district can afford. We just pay them what well, the best no, people are that comes into That's another picture. If they can't afford it, they can't afford it. And now you go by that. And you understand that. If you can't afford it, you go to the teachers say, we want to hire you. We like to pay what... <laughs> Most of the teachers in the country are making, but we can't afford it. We're going to have to hire you underpay. And I said when I called you, don't underpay them if you have to. Try not to. Try to pay them what all the teachers are making, the regular standard of good teachers. Pay them a good teacher's salary. Don't overpay them. Ike, I would say with sound light logic that you have just laid out, with sound logic that you have just shown, don't put words in that my mouth you, would be, you would be perfect to head up the school district based on who's been heading the school districts thus far. You would be perfect for it. You would be the perfect educator because you make no sense. Doc Thompson, 700 WLW. Todd sent me an email, doc at 700WLW.com. Subject regarding your last caller. Doc, you and your fancy double speak. I know, I know. Put words in people's mouth. See, I think I, think I got it right. Don't overpay them. Don't underpay them. You find the top level and pay them that, maybe a little bit more. And don't base that on any numbers that you could actually find. Just don't overpay them and don't underpay them. George in Middletown, how are you? Well, first, I hope you don't double talk me today. (laughs) I'm in that mood today, apparently. I really think that Ike was trying to get a superintendent's job the way he talked. But uh, the problem with his argument is basically one of just common sense. That is, pay them top dollar. It doesn't matter if they can do the job. Pay them top dollar. That's what we got now, isn't it? Yeah, that's a good point. He wasn't talking about their quality. We he didn't talk about if they're qualified for it or not or doing a good job. It doesn't matter. Pay them top dollar. That's what we're doing now. We got teachers making seventy, eighty, a hundred thousand a year who can't teach. But what the heck? Let's pay them all that. The schools just we just raise our taxes a little more. George, it sounds like to me you won't be celebrating National Teacher Appreciation Week. Uh, no. I, Nah, I, I doubt seriously, but I, I will. I will celebrate the failure of the levy. I, I'll celebrate that. I'll be cheering those more than I'll be cheering uh, the Osama bin Laden killing. Appreciate it. Thanks so much for calling. By the way, the Little Miami levy. This is the eighth in a row that they've put on. It failed again. One hundred and forty-three votes. That's what it failed by. One hundred and forty-three votes. 
votes matter. Now, I will offer once again just the smallest little bit of advice to Little Miami District. If you really want to get out of this and you really want to go, you're going to have to do something different. You're going to have to think out of the box, come up with a plan for what is within your power and legally you are able to do, whether it's putting classes online, downsizing, doing your best to come up with a plan by taking a lot of ideas in and the things that you are not able to do but would be a good idea That is where you petition your lawmakers and say, we need to get this done and let's do some things differently. You, Little Miami School District, could lead the state and maybe the nation in coming up with a new model for education. But I speculate what you'll do is just try another levy or you'll just dissolve instead of coming up with something new and leading. Doc Thompson on the Home of the Reds, 700 WLW. 